everybody. It's Seth Jones, Editor-in-Chief of Golf to Magazine. Today I'm being joined by Jared Stanick. He is the superintendent at Toscana Country Club out in Indian Wells, California. Uh, Jared, looking forward to, thanks for coming to doing a 19th hole interview with me. Well, thank you, Seth. It's it's good to see you uh, at least face-to-face -face again. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, tell me yeah. about the course. Uh, these two courses are, are amazing. So Jack Nicholas designed both of them himself. He actually used to, to have a house out here. Um, but they're fantastic. We have a desert 18 called the North Course um, with a real lush but desert palette, lots of agaves, cactus, acatillo, um, bougainvillea, lots of bougainvillea, lots of color. It's just beautiful. Less turf, obviously, on that one. So it's got more of a desert theme. And then our South Course is a lot more traditional. Big, big bunkers, white Augusta sand, date palms, roses. Um, it's, you know, so you have two really different golf courses, really different feel on both, but they both have that kind of Jack Nicholas um, style to them. So when you stand like on the green, you don't see the bunkers looking back. And I've noticed he, he takes that element through a lot of his golf courses. But like when you are facing on the tee, you know, the bunkers are really big, flashy faces, really formidable bunkering. A lot of the holes kind of favor his fade. You know, he had that big power fade. And so there's all these like speed slots and kind of bounce and rolls that you get and for me as, as a, a, a much less powerful fader of the ball but like you know I still hit that fade it's it's kind of cool to to play these golf courses to kind of access those design elements that he throws in there uh, but fantastic golf courses it's a it's a fully functioning residential community here we have 600 homes I, I uh, run the HOA the dog park the clubhouse the landscaping all of that plus the two golf courses within here. It's a really big self-contained um, golf residential community. And it's really, it's, it's a beautiful development it really is. So you and I, we, we, our paths first crossed almost two decades ago when we both went on a little uh, adventure down to new Orleans for the, for that trip uh, where we were putting together golf courses. Uh, gosh, can you believe it's been that long ago? We had probably what 45, 50 guys that went on a trip together. Yeah, it was a good group. I, I think we, you know, because we started in Colorado Springs at the Broadmoor and caravan down. And gosh, there was at least 40 of us, I think. You know, yeah. there's a lot of people that came for that. Yeah. Um, what's your, what so, do you yeah, remember? So the, what's some of your fond memory of that trip? Um, you know, I have a, a lot of good memories of that. It was, it was such a, a good week. And um, so I worked on, Oh, what's the name of the golf course that I worked on? English Turn, I think it was. English Turn. Um, anyway, they were the ones that were hosting the Zurich Classic. So it was going to be the first PGA Tour, our first professional sporting event that was to be hosted in New Orleans since Katrina. So it was kind of a, you know, I felt like it was kind of a big deal. Like, hey, let's, let's get this thing back to some sense of normalcy, right? Um, beautiful golf course. Uh, you know, I mean, and my work there was, was pretty mundane, but I felt like it was a, it was a good contribution. We were refreshing the sand and the bunkers, which had all been washed away, you know, so it was an important thing to do. And, and it was good, good, honest, like calloused hands work, you know, and work that I think we're all familiar with on our side of the business. So I was happy to do that, but the best part about it was just all of the, the camaraderie and, and meeting all these people, you know, for us, like having the little we had our little Wyoming cohort and to kind of have like a, a friendly little rivalry going with the Colorado state turf kids. And uh, it was fun to kind of have that and, and kind of get to mix and match with those guys and, and get to know them a little bit better and get to know. So obviously there was some very accomplished superintendents that were there with us too. And so for us as, you know, just turf students, um, interns at best, or, you know, crew guys trying to find our way, to get to kind of interact with those guys and kind of see, you know, like, you know, what this, this career path can look like, I think was really important for me. Cause you know, when I, when I went to English turn, you know, I, I, I got to speak with the superintendent and he took me around the golf course and we, we talked about some things and I was just like amazed at how beautiful the golf course was, but also just, you know, I'm very impressed with his professionalism and like, and just, he had this huge diverse staff and, and just, how he seemed to just have this kind of calm energy about him that I felt like was really important. And it's just like, you know, he just felt like very, just, just solid. 
and his, his agronomic skills were on to full display. I mean, the guy was just really doing some impressive stuff. And I was like, this is great. And it kind of gave me something to be like, okay, maybe I can do this. You know, maybe this is the right path for me to go on. And of course, Bourbon Street and the food that we ate, I mean, I mean, the food, I mean, every night, I remember having to cook out at each of the maintenance shops that yeah. we got to go to and we had our chefs, you know, making us gumbo and making us all this Southern food. I mean, for me, you know, from Wyoming, like having been eating, you know, ramen noodles and, and popcorn out of the microwave for dinner for the last month, like to go down there and eat like that. I mean, it was just like, oh yeah, this is all right. <laughs> I could do this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, cool. yep. yeah. yeah. How about, how about you? I mean, you know, what do you remember from that? Well, I didn't have to do I, I, the calloused hands has never been a part of my job. So I never, <laughs> you know, that very well. I got to bounce around from course yeah. to course and, and just kind of visit on each crew and, and kind of yeah. take it all in. And, and that was fun to, you know, get to see some, you know, from some very nice courses to some very, you know, uh, low budget courses, just trying to get by and, yeah. and, uh, and, and just kind of appreciate what New Orleans golf is. And, uh, and then also just to, you know, I made, you know, just meeting 40 dudes. I was pretty, you know, I was young in my career back then and I didn't know a whole lot of people back then. And to all of a sudden get a week with 40 guys in the business that opened up a lot of network for me right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think that's great. I mean, I mean, hearing you say that kind of reminded me of the, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the golf course, but the one down in the ninth ward. Yeah. Do you remember do you remember this story where the superintendent was telling us that him and his assistant actually had a couple of bodies that washed up against the fence mm -hmm. Yeah, and they had, you know, there's nobody to call. There was nobody that could, it's not like you can be like, Hey, come on yeah. coroner, come pick, you know, they had to actually yeah. bag the bodies and take them down to the area where they're collecting all the bodies. I mean, when I heard that, like, you just don't, there's no way to really conceptualize the the disaster and like the loss that those people went through until you like start to see it and hear those stories and it's like oh my god like the humanity you know and like for them I felt like you know they're a low budget small golf course but for them it was like we need to get this for the community so they have something to do that gets them out of what they're going through and I was just like that's a deeper purpose and it's like you know, it's like you have the one end where I am like splashing white sand bunkers for a tour event. I felt like there was still a community purpose to it, mm -hmm. but it was a, a different universe from what those guys were doing. And I was like, this is where the real need is, you know, is down there for that community. And it was, you know, I know for the group that was down there, it was, it was tough. And it was, I think it was a, a really emotional thing. And for me that night, it was super I mean, it was gutting almost to like see that and to hear their stories and be like, wow, like, you know, and I'm just a, you know, <laughs> just a college kid. I get to, I get to walk away from this in a couple of days. I yeah. get to go back to my dorm room and, and, and keep living my very, very lucky life that I have, you know, in the middle of Wyoming. And, you know, so that was really a powerful experience to, mm -hmm. to be a part of that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that I got to see it. And I, and I, my heart goes out to them now that, you know, I know they just had another storm go through and I hope everybody's okay from that, but it's mm -hmm. just like, wow. Yep. You know, yep. so that was, that was good. I felt like that was an important thing for us to all be a part of, you know, yep. and, and contribute it in the small ways that we all can contribute, you know? Yep. yep. It was uh, Peter Carew was the super there. Was it, was it Brechtel Park? I think was the name of the course. Does that sound right? There you go. There you go. I think that's it. Yeah. And Peter was, he was a heck of a storyteller too. I mean, that guy, I mean, he, and he let us in for everything. He was like, don't, you know, any questions you got, anything you want to know, I'll tell you. And I remember I stuck around right. with him when FEMA came and I, and I got to eyewitness that argument with the, you know, the FEMA adjust, you know, what, what, on the, what kind of damage was done. And I was like, this is too adult for me, man. I'm stressing out just being a fly on the yeah. wall here. You know, it was crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Jared, thank you for taking the time. Hey, thanks, Seth. And, and it's always good to talk to you, man. And I, I hope we get to see each other soon. Okay.